On your left is the ASUS PG27AQDM OLED monitor. On your right is the LG 27GR95QE, its closest rival in the 27-inch OLED monitor category. Both monitors use an MLA or microlens array OLED panel from LG Display, which is evident not only from a super magnified shot of its subpixel structure showing small circular indentations corresponding to the micro lenses, but also the matte screen coating which mutes reflections effectively at the expense of outright clarity in a brighter environment. Thanks to improved light scattering from MLA, the ASUS PG27AQDM boasts outstanding viewing angles with less off-axis painting than other WBE OLED panels not equipped with MLA technology. One unique selling point on the ASUS PG27AQDM is the implementation of a custom heatsink, contributing to significant brightness advantage over the LG 27GR95QE. In SDR mode, Maximum full field brightness after calibration to D65 white point came in at 250 nits on the ASUS, whereas it's less than 200 nits on the LG. In HDR mode, peak white on a 10% window measured 900 nits at D65 on the ASUS, while it's only 650 nits on the LG. So HDR content would generally look more impactful on the ASUS PG27 AQDM. Another example where these differences manifested themselves was on predominantly white background when using the monitor for work purposes, be it in SDR or HDR. That said, in HDR mode, brightness on the ASUS PG27AQDM dropped off dramatically after 50% APL, so the ABL dimming in certain scenes would be more jarring than the LG which has a smoother drop-off. Furthermore, the PQ UTF tracking on our ASUS review sample wasn't as linear as we had hoped for in all HDR picture presets, causing 1. Some crushing of shadow detail, 2. Faces in certain sequences looking too flat, and 3. Some scenes at different brightness levels appearing overly contrasty. We sincerely hope that ASUS can address this with a firmware update in the near future to achieve better HDR picture quality especially since most picture calibration settings are greyed out and unavailable in HDR mode. For watching HDR10 movies, only the ASUS Cinema HDR picture preset clearly adapts its tone curve to ST2086 metadata, allowing more bright highlight detail to be preserved in 4000 nit content. However, because the monitor responds to max MDL or maximum mastering display luminance instead of max CL metadata, certain titles which are graded conservatively within a 4000 nit container, such as Tenet, would be presented in a slightly darker manner than they should be. When it came to near black handling, some flashing artifacts were visible on this moving HDR10 quantization test pattern from Stacy Spears of Spears and Mansell fame. But because the shadows were slightly crushed in both SDR and HDR modes, we rarely saw flashing artifacts in real-world material on the ASUS PG27AQDM. Color-wise, the ASUS monitor was very well calibrated out of the box in SDR sRGB mode, and even came complete with a calibration report. In HDR mode, however, some colors at certain brightness levels would appear desaturated compared to reference, but became oversaturated in scenes darker than 100 nits. Without a side-by-side -side comparison to a reference display, most users will probably not be aware, but it's there nonetheless, so hopefully ASUS can improve HDR color accuracy with a future firmware update. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage measured 99% in UV terms, whereas REC2020 was 76%, in keeping with WRGB OLED displays we've tested in recent years. Let's talk about some picture settings in the user menu. Vivid Pixel has no bearing on colors in the more accurate picture modes according to our measurements. Instead, it seems to be a sharpness control, of which 50 is the neutral setting above which ringing will be introduced, and below which fine detail will start getting blurrier. Shadow Boost was a setting we thought could be used to alleviate the darker than referenced near black gamma, but it affected luminance levels higher than where we wanted to adjust, and so is best kept off. 
Aspect Control allows you to display lower resolution content on screen without scaling. Uniform brightness can be toggled on and off in certain SDR picture modes, providing a more stable luminance across different window sizes without ABL or automatic brightness limiter kicking in. Even though the uniform brightness setting was grayed out in sRGB mode, it appeared to be active under the hood, delivering a consistent maximum peak white of 250 nits regardless of the window size. Note that in HDR mode, most picture settings, including vivid pixel, shadow boost and uniform brightness cannot be adjusted, so you are mostly stuck with ASUS factory calibration. 24fps material was reproduced correctly without telecynic judder, allowing for smooth presentation of slow panning shots in movies. Because the supply HDMI ports are limited to HDMI 2.0 without FRL signaling, refresh rate at native resolution is capped at 120Hz over HDMI, so if you want to take full advantage of the 240Hz capabilities of the monitor, you will have to use the DisplayPort socket which is packed up to version 1.4. The combination of 240fps video signal paired with 240hz screen refresh rate resulted in very high motion clarity, which was further enhanced by OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time, measured to be 0.6 milliseconds on the ASUS PG27AQDM. Before you lament the lack of HDMI 2.1 ports on the ASUS PG27AQDM, Using an SOC without HDMI 2.1 support is not without its own advantages, in that native 10-bit gradation was very good, with minimal posterization not only in the skies of the Martian, but also on this grey ramp pattern from the Display HDR app. Just like on the LG 27GR95QE, there is some over-provisioning of pixels beyond 2560 x 1440 resolution such that pixel shifting will never cause edges of the picture to be cropped off however slightly. Bright uniformity was excellent on our review unit, with no bending or the discrete effect, and only the mildest degree of color tinting along the sides, particularly on the right. There is some thin vertical streaks on dark grey slides just above black, typical of WRGB OLED displays we have reviewed over the years. Using a Leo Botna 4K lag tester to measure over HDMI, input lag came in at 19 milliseconds at 60 frames per second, 11 milliseconds at 120 frames per second, and 7.7 .7 milliseconds at 240 frames per second. These figures are slightly higher than the corresponding results obtained from the LG 27GR95QE. However, when we used an NVIDIA LDAT device to measure end-to-end -end system latency at 240fps over DisplayPort, the average latency across 100 runs came in at a superfast 13.5 milliseconds, which is only 1 millisecond lower than that measured on the LG 27GR95QE, so there shouldn't be any concern when playing over DisplayPort, which is the connection of choice for this ASUS monitor anyway. Talking of which, the PG27AQDM is not optimized for next-gen console gaming, since its two HDMI ports are only HDMI 2.0 without FRL support, so you won't be able to play in 4K 120Hz resolution on the Xbox Series X or the Sony PS5. If you still insist to play on consoles though, ASUS has at least provided HDIG support on the monitor in the ASUS console HDR picture preset which hard clips at 950 nits for both maximum tone matte luminance and maximum full frame tone matte luminance. Despite this, bright highlight detail in HDIG compliant games still appeared slightly blown out on our review sample, possibly due to its wonky PQUTF tracking across all HDR picture modes. Otherwise, the monitor supports all three major VR formats including AMD FreeSync Premium and Nvidia G-Sync delivering smooth gameplay without frame drops or tearing artifacts. VRR flicker remained unavoidable in a handful of VRR games, especially on static menus, but the frequency and intensity did not seem as obvious or bothersome as that observed on larger OLED TVs. Being a monitor, 444 Chroma was fully reproduced natively without any problem but the ASUS PG27AQDM is less than ideal for work and productivity purposes. Owing to its WBGR subpixel structure which would look fuzzier with some color fringing when displaying fine text, 
compared to a monitor with conventional RGB stripe layout. In this extreme torture test where we displayed a peak white window at full blast in HDR for 10 seconds, then switched to a full field gray slide, image retention took somewhat longer to disappear on the ASUS PG27AQDM, which is not surprising given its higher peak brightness, though the darker near black gamma on the ASUS played a part in making the afterglow look more obvious than on the LG 27G R95QE. ASUS does provide a comprehensive array of anti-screen burn measures, ranging from screen saver and pixel refresh compensation cycles to pixel shifting and logo luminous adjustment to mitigate permanent OLED burn-in. However, what slightly concerned us was the persistent use of a bright red color on many UI elements on screen. While this is in keeping with the monitor's color scheme and branding, displaying the same bright red color in the same location over a prolonged period of time could increase the risk of OLED burn-in. So perhaps ASUS might want to consider toning down the color intensity, or let owners choose to use other less damaging colors. To sum up, the ASUS PG27AQDM is a fantastic product in the 27-inch monitor category for playing fast action games, as long as you use its DisplayPort 1.4 socket to take full advantage of 240Hz refresh rate to go with OLED's self-emissive goodness of true blacks, vibrant colors, wide viewing angles, and near instantaneous pixel response time. Thanks partly to the addition of a custom heatsink, the ASUS PG27AQDM can go brighter than its key rival, the LG 27GR95QE across many window sizes in both SDR and HDR, making the ASUS more suitable for use in a brighter environment. Add to the fact that it's accurately calibrated from factory, at least in the SDR sRGB mode, and the ASUS PG27AQDM earns our recommended award. Of course, no display is perfect, and shortcomings on this monitor include wonky PQUTF tracking and desaturated colors at certain brightness levels in HDR mode, which we pray can be fixed by ASUS in a future firmware update, because fundamentally, there's no doubt that the PG27AQDM has superior hardware to the LG 27GR95QE. Now, despite the 240Hz refresh rate on this OLED monitor, some of you believe that a 360Hz or even 480Hz LED LCD monitor will perform even better. But you're wrong, because OLED's motion advantage over LED LCD goes beyond mere refresh rate figures. As I have demonstrated in this OLED vs LCD side-by-side -side comparison you can watch by clicking here.